This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my patrons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Colossal Color Showdown in which I compared the same name color across 12 different brands and see what the differences are. This is episode 15 and we're going to start taking a look at the new Gamboge. Now obviously with a name like new Gamboge it means we used to have Gamboge, like genuine Gamboge thing. I couldn't find a genuine Gamboge paint but I can talk to you guys about it. The original Gamboge is made by tapping the resin and not the sap because a lot of people think it's a sap but it's the resin of the Gamboge tree. It is a partially transparent deep saffron to mustard yellow color so like bright yellow but quite deep and transparent it's weak in tinting strength it is prone to fading which is probably why we decided on new gamboge and for me because i love hooker's green the most interesting thing is that the original hooker's green that william hooker we talked about this in the hooker's green episode which i will leave link up here he mixed prussian blue and genuine gamboge to create hooker's green now back to the modern days we have 12 brands dennis smith holbein winsor newton core and graham mission gold De La Rowney, Rembrandt, Block X, Turner, Old Holland and Van Gogh. They all either are called Gamboge or New Gamboge. We also have Permanent Gamboge and Gamboge Hue, Gamboge Lake Extra, but they're all going to be the non-genuine stuff unless it says genuine Gamboge and it has a pigment code of NY24. Nowadays, New Gamboge colors are made with like Diorolide, Benzi, Quinacridone, Hansa's, Nickel, Azure Yellow, those kind of very intense bright yellow colors. So let's take a look at the hues and there's definitely two very distinct groups of colors. We have the yellow orangey color in the Daniel Smith and Graham De La Rowney Block X and then the very cool yellow colors. So the Rembrandt, Windsor, Newton, Quar, Van Gogh and then a couple that are in the middle but there's definitely a color split so if you are used to one brand and you try another brand and it's completely different that's not your fault that is because there is a huge range of colors it's a bit like the hooker's green in that there is no agreed consensus it's not like the vermilion that we had in the last one which they all kind of looked pretty similar this is very different depending on the brand some go down very very smooth m graham went down beautifully holbein went down beautifully de la rowney surprisingly went down beautifully whereas some get very streaky like the core cool one Windsor Newton one, Rembrandt Turner, they're more transparent and they've got that nickel as a yellow. Nickel as a yellow at its mass tone is very prone to streaking. They are beautiful colors, but they do tend to streak at mass tone. In terms of re-wet, Rembrandt was hard to re-wet. Turner was very hard to re-wet. It was like trying to water a fossil, kind of very hard to re-wet. Easy to re-wet, the Block X one was easy to re-wet and the Old Holland was really easy to re-wet. When I say really easy to re-wet, I mean other brands that I don't make a note on re-wet, re-wets the way I would expect it to. And then when I say easy to re-wet, they re-wet even more easier than what I'm normally used to from across the brands. So please don't think just because I have a brand that doesn't say easy to re-wet, means they're hard to regret they're not they, these are very easy to regret too but these two are more particularly easy to regret i hope that makes sense now i have noticed a few shiny colors so i'm not sure if it's gonna show up on this video but in daylight with my eyes i can see that daniel smith core rembrandt and old holland definitely have a shine a little bit too much binder kind of thing. Now Holbein and Block X has a different kind of shine. It's not shiny but it's more like a sheen. It's a more even kind of color. Not sure if I can catch it. It's not major but in daylight there's definitely a sheen. So if you want to use a color 
in its mass tone, then I would avoid those brands. Let's take a look at the prices. The most expensive color in the UK is the Block X Gamboge, which is at 99 pence per milliliter. And the cheapest brand is the Van Gogh by 35 pence per milliliter. But of course, Van Gogh is a student brand. So in terms of pro brands, Turner is the cheapest at 43 pence per milliliter. But in terms of rewear, it's absolutely terrible. So let's, let's look at the next cheapest one. And that is the Windsor Newton New Gamboge one for pro one that I would actually not discourage you from getting with like the Turner one. I'm just like, no, we did have some binder split. We had the Gamboge Nova by Holbein had a binder split, but I had the old brand packaging one, the one with the older label. So it might just be that it's been there for ages. Whereas the Turner one, I brought it new as in I bought it for this series. So it hasn't been sitting around for years, but it still had a binder split. In terms of US prices, the most expensive again is the Block X one. Don't know why that's so expensive considering it's just Hansa Yellow. And the cheapest one again is the Van Gogh one at 34 pence per milliliter. But again, student brand, so the pro brand is the Windsor Newton one. So whether you're in the UK or the US, the cheapest one is the New Game Boys by Windsor & Newton. Then we have the opacity test and there is a huge range of opacity. We have very transparent from Rembrandt. I was like putting it down. I was like, am I putting anything down or is this water? Because it was so very transparent. I think it's the most transparent color we've had on this series. Then the most opaque is, I would say, the M. Graham, the Mission Gold. These two and the Dale Rani are very opaque. And then we have some middle of the road ones. So again, very great for choice because you can pick a new gambo or two, but get the specific opacity that you want to work with. Then we have the lift and glaze. Again, a wide variety of staining levels. The least staining was a hobo one. This is practically back to white. And I would say that Old Holland was pretty much back to white. The most staining one was the core one. It's considerably more staining than I would say all the other colors. In terms of glazing though, I would say core is the best because you see the layer underneath properly and it's very transparent layer. It's very even. And I would say the minimum amount of lift is some, but it's nowhere near as bad as say the Van Gogh one or the Turner one. I would also say that M. Graham is great for glazing. You see the layer clearly and there's minimal lift again. There are others that go down evenly like Della Rowney, Block X, but you don't see the layer as much, which is a little bit confusing because M. Graham is the most opaque one, but it still glazes well. So well done, M. Graham. <laughs> Daniel Smith is also a pretty good one. I would say that, yeah, Van Gogh is terrible at <laughs> glazing. And this is kind of why I don't recommend student grade. And I'm like, just go for the cheapest pro brand if you are strapped for cash, because it just gives you so much headaches that you don't need to have. If you like to try some of these colors, but you're not quite ready to commit to a tube because you'd like to try the colors at home and mix it with the colors you have and make sure it works with your palette, then I have your back. This month's Patreon exclusive dot card is the companion dot card to this series and it is the new Cambodge. It has eight professional quality brands. Daniel Smith, Holbein, Windsor Newton, Mission Gold, De La Rowney, love that De La Rowney, Rembrandt, Block X, Old Holland. So really good mix of the warm yellows and the cool yellow transparent ones. So you can really test and see which one you prefer. If you'd like to receive this dot card, then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno and sign up to the appropriate tiers. And I will be posting this dot card to you very soon. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to carry on taking a look at the new Gamboge in terms of gradation, salt test, how it looks on cotton and the color mixes. If you'd like to try any of these 
colors, then I have links down below to Jackson's and Amazon USA for where you can buy these colors. Please do let me know which one was your favorite in the comments and just like and share because that really, really helps. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you in the next video. Bye.